We have some serious injuries to talk about, and we have so many wide receivers. I'm going to be very brief with the top guys, right? Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, we know that these guys are studs. Jefferson last year accounted for more receiving yards on a per-game basis than any wide receiver in NFL history at 23 years old. I mean, that's ahead of Calvin Johnson, who was at 83. That's ahead of Randy Moss, who was at 90. I mean, that's ahead of Hopkins. It's ahead of Odell. Jefferson is that guy, and that's why he's number one not only in these wide receiver rankings but also in my overall fantasy football rankings now going over to jamar chase at two this is a wide receiver that yes i mean was a little quote unquote disappointing he got hurt last year all right i mean that's not going to happen again this next season or at least he's not more likely to get injured than other wide receivers at the very top here this is a wide receiver that accounted for 31 percent of joe burrow's targets on a per game basis this past season i know he's on some podcast saying yeah no joe burrow you can come back in week five we're gonna be chilling no okay that's not happening joe burrow will be playing week one there's no reason to worry going down to our next tier we're gonna have tyree kill here now i know some people had cooper cup before the hamstring injury i had tyree kill all along i mean cup 30 years old tyreek i mean a about the same age, a little bit younger, but Tyree Kill, wide receiver three last year from a points per game perspective, and could have been the wide receiver one if Tua stayed healthy all season. In the games where Tua was healthy, Tyree Kill actually averaged 21 fantasy points per game and almost 110 receiving yards per game. Now, the games where Tua missed, Tyree Kill actually fell to about 75 and a half receiving yards per game, only 15 and a half fantasy points per game. So, I mean, that's not too, too exciting, but I mean, I believe Tua should be playing this next year. I know a lot of other people are worried. Now, going over to Cup, this is a wide receiver that you should actually probably be a little bit worried about the injuries with, right? Cooper Cup missed the end of last season, and maybe you make the argument, well, Mason, come on, man. They weren't playing for anything. Stafford got injured. Why the hell would Cooper Cup have to go through and play through an injury at the end of last year? And that's a fair argument, right? If you're on a losing team and you get injured, you probably want to be sitting out some games and playing it safe. Well, right? Right now, the Los Angeles Rams have an expected win total, according to Las Vegas Sportsbooks, at six and a half. The Rams should be a losing team this next season. Cup, at the same time, is already dealing with a hamstring injury. Cooper Cup is 30 years old. Now, of course, this does not mean you can't draft Cooper Cup. I still have him as my wide receiver four. I mean, hell, two years ago, he led the NFL in receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. The ceiling is elite, but you at least have to acknowledge the downside that you may not have with the other wide receivers in this range. Now, going over to our next guy, Stefan Diggs, I don't think he has the ceiling of those top four options, but arguably, he has a higher floor than anybody. This is a wide receiver that for three straight seasons now, Top 10 wide receiver in fantasy. This is a wide receiver for three straight seasons, over a 27% team target share, 110 total air yards per game, 2.4 yards per target. You don't really have any added in target competition outside of Dalton Kincaid. Not too worried about that. With Stefan Diggs, he still has Josh Allen. Just a super safe selection. Now, CeeDee Lamb, our next guy. Wide receiver seven last year. Still incredibly young. Actually younger than Kenny Pickett. Now, if you're looking at Lamb, he could have even been better last season if Dak Prescott stayed healthy. The 12 games you had Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb averaged about 18 and a half fantasy points per contest. The five games with no Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb was at 16 and a half points per game so I mean this is someone that should continue to get better He's still incredibly young and I think the Dallas Cowboys offense should be a little bit better this next season not as good as the Eagles offense though with AJ Brown as our next guy now we went through and looked at every single rankings list that we could find for offensive lines going into 2023 and consensus across the board every single offensive line expert essentially says the Philadelphia Eagles should be the best offensive line in the NFL and that you should most likely expect the Philadelphia Eagles to be a top three offense overall again this next season. Now with AJ Brown, the reason I'm not going to have him ahead of CeeDee Lamb is he does have to compete for targets with Devonta Smith as well as Dallas Goddard. And clearly Jalen Hurts is going to be running the ball like a madman, right? I mean, with Jalen Hurts, his player prop right now on underdog has him scoring double digit rushing touchdowns this next year. That's wild. I mean, that baseline expectation is going to take a little bit away from the passing game. And that's why even in those underdog drafts, I'm going CD Lamb over AJ Brown at this point. But of course, quick side note, if you want to check out any of those player props on Underdog Fantasy, you always can with the link in the description or the comment section. Right now, my favorite player prop on Underdog is actually going to be Drake London 
for more receiving touchdowns than Michael Gallup this next season. We'll talk about London a little bit later on, but this is also where we are drafting every single day on the live stream. We've drafted over, I believe, 250 teams already this offseason. We won 150,000 on underdog last year. It's best ball, so no time commitment at all during the year. And if you sign up with promo code FLOCK, they're going to match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to 100. Plus, we'll get our 2023 fantasy football rankings and a free trial to flogfantasy.com. Now, going over to our next guy, we're going to be looking at Devontae Adams, who over the past three seasons has been the best wide receiver in fantasy. Over the past three years, he's had over 10 targets per game every single season, pretty much right at 10 and a half. He's had a target share mark of 30% for the past three seasons. He has averaged almost three yards per route run. He has been on average the wide receiver three from a points per game perspective. And I know a lot of people are worried about Jimmy Garoppolo saying Jimmy Garoppolo's not good, blah, blah, blah. Don't read into it that much, okay? I mean, yes, he was worse last season when he played with Jarrett Stidham in comparison to Derek Carr. The five games with Stidham, you actually had Devontae Adams at about 16 points per game, whereas the 12 games with Derek Carr, he was at about 21 points per game. So maybe you assume that Devontae Adams slides down a bit if you think that Jimmy Garoppolo is worse than Derek Carr. I think he is a lot better than Jared Stidham, I will say that. But regardless, I think that you are getting a discount based off the uncertainty at quarterback. And I'm fine buying the dip on that price. Now, our next guy, Garrett Wilson, I am so pumped to watch on Hard Knocks. Wide receiver 31 this past year on a per game basis, but it's the quarterback upgrade, quarterback upgrade, quarterback upgrade that we are looking forward to. I mean, he was just handicapped with Zach Wilson this past year where the nine games he played with Zach Wilson he was at about eight and a half fantasy points per game whereas the eight games with no Zach Wilson come on this is Joe Flacco and Mike White we're talking about 17 and a half points per game now you're getting Aaron Rodgers coming over you're getting a massive quarterback upgrade and you should be really excited now going over to our next guy Amon Ross St. Brown going to be in a great Detroit Lions offense phenomenal offensive line right Amon Ross St. Brown's going to be that target hog closer to the line of scrimmage is the wide receiver that was the wide receiver 10 this past year from a points per game perspective I don't know if he has the true league winning ceiling that you may have from someone like a Garrett Wilson but I think the floor is so incredibly high with the Monra St. Brown I'm going to be more excited about a Monra in a full PPR format than I would be a non-PPR league this is someone that you're excited about just racking up receptions now, our next guy, Jalen Waddle, was our most drafted wide receiver on Underdog last year. I mean, this is a wide receiver that has had back-to-back -back finishes. This is a low-end wide receiver one, a high-end wide receiver two, and he could have been even better this past season. You're looking at 13 games with Tua, where he averages about 17 points per game. Four games with no Tua, he's at about 10 and a half. Very similar to what we were talking about with Tyreek Hill previously. I do expect Tua to play this next season. I'm pretty damn confident in saying that Waddle is going to be at the very minimum a high end wide receiver too now our next guy chris alave a little deceiving of a rookie year right you look at the surface it's not great wide receiver 27 from a points per game perspective but you have to go under the hood you have to look at the advanced numbers and what we've seen in comparison to rookies throughout nfl history if we look at wide receivers that were able to have a target share number from a per game perspective in the realm of Chris Olave, while at the same time seeing about the same amount of receiving yards on a per game basis, at the same time at least playing eight games, here are the rookie wide receivers. You had Chris Olave, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, Odell Beckham Jr., Mike Evans, Keenan Allen, Julio Jones, AJ Green. At each of their respective careers, all of those guys were top five wide receivers in the NFL at some point. Now you're also getting the upgrade from Andy Dalton to Derek Carr. Get excited about Chris Olave, ladies and gentlemen. Our next guy, T. Higgins, also a very deceiving season on the surface. Wide receiver 20 from a points per game perspective. But you have to remember, T. Higgins played a couple games where he didn't actually play. He went out there, he maybe played one snap, and then left the field, got me a big old goose egg on my fantasy football team. And yeah, it skews his overall per game numbers. So if we remove the games where he played fewer than 30% of snaps, instead of T. Higgins being the wide receiver 20 from a points per game perspective, he was actually the wide receiver 12 
from a points per game perspective, which was the same thing that you had two years ago. So I mean, back-to-back -back wide receiver 12 seasons from T. Higgins. Low in wide receiver one, high in wide receiver two. You know what you're getting. Now, our next guy, Devonta Smith, had that breakout this past year, right? Now, the issue is very similar to A.J. Brown. While this is an elite-level offense, you have A.J. Brown, you have Smith, you have Goddard. You have a lot of talent here. And also, this will be a team that is primarily running the ball with Jalen Hurts and also the phenomenal offensive line that they have. With that being said, though, Devonta Smith was the wide receiver 14 last season. With that being said, Avonta Smith arguably put up the best collegiate wide receiver season we have ever seen. It's an elite level offense, so I'm fine taking him in like the middle to end of round three of your regular redraft formats. Now, our next guy, we moved up these rankings. Amari Cooper is a wide receiver that I think is a little bit undervalued across the board right now. Amari Cooper, wide receiver 18, with a 24% team target share this past season. That's a season where he dealt with Jacoby Brissett through the majority of it, and then he had Deshaun Watson when Deshaun Watson had not played football in over two years. I believe the Cleveland Browns offense, which has an elite offensive line, should see a massive bounce back with Deshaun Watson's play this next season. While you do bring in Elijah Moore, at the same time, Amari Cooper can still easily get to a 24-25% team target share. So I'm going to move Amari ahead of these other guys. Like I used to have DK Metcalf ahead of him, right? But if you dive into this, I can't really justify having DK Metcalf ahead of Amari Cooper when Amari was better in fantasy this past season. Amari sees his situation improve going into this next year. And DK Metcalf was the wide receiver 26 from a points per game perspective in 2022. He was the wide receiver 30 from a points per game perspective in 2021. So back-to-back -back wide receiver three finishes for Metcalf and his situation gets worse. You add in the best wide receiver in this year's NFL draft. So now you have a phenomenal three wide receiver set there in Seattle with Metcalf, JSN, as well as Tyler Lockett. But I do think maybe this is a tiebreaker where we can move Amari Cooper ahead of Metcalf. Our next guy, Calvin Ridley, obviously looks like he is just dominating in training camp. We have clips going viral. We have a clip where he just looks 10 times faster than Zay Jones. We have uh, some crazy alley grabs. So with Ridley, I'm happy to see that he's still been training with his time off, right? I mean, you didn't really know exactly what to expect. There's always a little bit of uncertainty with a player coming back from this long of a leave. But with Ridley, he is a target hog when healthy. He was a top five wide receiver the last time we saw him play an entire season. And if you look at that 2020 season, if you remove the two games where he was playing injured and saw fewer than 70% of the snaps, he saw 10 and a half targets per game, as well as 101 receiving yards on a per game basis with Julio Jones in that offense. That's the upside of Calvin Ridley. Obviously, it's hard to say the floor is the exact same as what you have with Metcalf and Amari when we just haven't seen the man in so long. But nonetheless, I mean, if you're getting him in round six, round five of your regular redraft format, you have to be all about it. Now, our next guy, Jerry Judy, is also someone moving up these rankings, right? I mean, if you're looking at Jerry Judy, this is a wide receiver that I was a little hesitant on earlier this offseason. Now, y'all know I've been a leader of the Cortland Sutton hater fan club or in the Jerry Judy fan club. I mean, last year, we were the only person on the planet saying Judy wide receiver one in Denver. But I was a little worried because you were getting Tim Patrick back. You were getting KJ Hamler back. They took Marvin Mims in the second round. Javante Williams was coming back. Greg Dolch is going in year two. I thought there were a lot of mouths to feed in Denver. Well, now Hamler is no longer with the team. I know they're going to, quote, unquote, bring him back, we, but we don't have clarity with that situation. Obviously, Tim Patrick also out for the season. So now that we remove some of the depth in this overall wide receiver room, I think it will be easier for Jerry Judy to get to a 22, 23% team target share, which is what you were looking for. So I think we have to move Jerry Judy up. Now, our next guy, Debo Samuel, nobody likes. Every single person in their mom will tell you that Debo Samuel is a bad fantasy football pick this year. It is cool to hate on Debo Samuel for whatever reason. Now, I'm going to rank him here because we have seen the elite level ceiling from Debo Samuel before. We saw him as the wide receiver three in 2021. He averaged 110 
total yards per game. Now, he fell considerably this past season. And yes, it's very concerning, especially when you look at the usage with and without Christian McCaffrey. In games that Debo Samuel played with Christian McCaffrey, he averages 11 points per game. In games without Christian McCaffrey, he was at 16. You saw his target volume go down. You saw his rushing involvement go down. And it kind of makes a little bit of sense, right? Because it seems like Debo is the wide receiver version of CMC. CMC is the running back version of Debo Samuel. So inherently, bringing in McCaffrey into this offense probably negatively impacts Debo Samuel. Now, our next wide receiver, Christian Watson, helped us win a $20,000 underdog tournament last season. We just made a video going through and recapping that team. Christian Watson, obviously, if you look at his season-long numbers, they're not great. He was playing at the beginning of the year in a part-time role. I mean, it's really hard to just look at what he was giving you in the first nine weeks. But if you look at weeks 10 through 18, so the second half of the season here, and we sort by points per game, you have Justin Jefferson, CeeDee Lamb, Devontae Adams, Keenan Allen, Amon Ross St. Brown, Devonta Smith, Chris Godwin, and then Christian Watson. Now, Christian Watson has a red flag in that he had a 10.6% touchdown rate this past year. We know, historically speaking, that that touchdown rate has to come down. We saw the same thing with Chase Claypool his rookie season, and we know how that story played out. But on the other hand, what makes Christian Watson different than a wide receiver like Chase Claypool is Christian Watson had 2.6 yards per route run. The only wide receivers that had 2.6 yards per route run or more were Cooper Cup, Jalen Waddell, A.J. Brown, Justin Jefferson, and Tyreek Hill this past season. So I stand by Watson being a great wide receiver, not just uh, the next Chase Claypool. Now, our guy after this is going to be Keenan Allen. And I am worried about Keenan Allen. I know a lot of other people love him. I know a lot of people are going to tell me, Mason, you're stupid. Look at the splits before and after his injury. And yeah, I mean, that's why I'm still ranking him as the wide receiver one here in a full PPR format. But nonetheless, this is a wide receiver that went from the wide receiver seven in 2020, the wide receiver 10 in 2021, and the wide receiver 12 in 2022. He saw his target share from a per game perspective fall from about 26 percent down to 21 percent over that same time period if we go through and use the road of his screener to figure out what wide receivers comp to be similar going into their age 10 season based off this past year you had joe horn back in 2002 and he fell from 16 and a half points per game down to 15.8 you had keenan mccardle who fell from about 15 points per game down to 15.1. Troy Brown went from 16.2 down to 14.8. You had Derek Mason going from 15.9 down to 13.2. You had Calvin Johnson retiring, and now we have Keenan Allen. So across the board, every single one of these players at this age got worse. So you're telling me this is a wide receiver that's declining with his target volume. This is a wide receiver that's going into year 10. This is a team that just added a first round talent in Quinton Johnston. I think that there are red flags with Keenan Allen. I love drafting him last year, but now it's a little bit different. Now, our next guy, DeAndre Hopkins, I don't know what to say. All right. I, I don't know how this is going to play out in Tennessee. The Tennessee Titans have one of the worst offensive lines in the NFL going into this next year. With this as well, I mean, DeAndre Hopkins is similar to Keenan Allen's going into year 10. This is a team that wants to run the ball. This is a wide receiver that dealt with injuries in 2022. So I don't exactly know what we should be expecting this next season. But what I will say is he's had three straight years now with over two yards per route run. Now, our next guy, Drake London, who we are saying has our favorite player prop on underdog fantasy right now. Drake London versus Michael Gallup receiving touchdowns. Of course, you can find that link in the comment section, promo code flock. But nonetheless, was a very bad option in fantasy last year. Wide receiver 47 from a points per game perspective, but it was not his fault. The Atlanta Falcons were the third worst passing offense that we have seen from a passing yards per game perspective over the past decade. If we look at the market share numbers for 21-year-old players that were able to average 23% of their team's target share or more on a points per game basis, you had Drake London, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Mike Evans, and Christian McCaffrey. He is an elite-level talent 
The issue is the situation, situation, situation. Obviously, I can't sit here and tell you Desmond Ritter is going to be great. So I do have to have Drake London as a low and wide receiver too. Now, our next guy, Mike Williams, back-to-back finishes as a top 24 wide receiver. A way better price point now this season than he was a year ago. Last year, you had to take him in the third. Now you get him like the sixth. I'm fine taking Mike Williams in the sixth round, given the fact this is an elite-level offense, plus Keenan Allen's going to year 10. Now, I know everybody loves Terry McLaurin, right? I can already hear you in the comment section screaming at me for this, going, Mason, you clown, how the hell can you have Terry McLaurin as the wide receiver 24? Well, Terry McLaurin is going into his age 28 season, Terry McLaurin has never posted a top 20 wide receiver in fantasy from a points per game perspective. He has never been a top 20 wide receiver in fantasy. Points per game, of course. So you're telling me that now that he's 28, he's finally going to get over that hump. I understand we can blame the prior performances on quarterback play, but are you a massive Sam Howell fan going into this next year? Sam Howell may be good, but he's probably bad if we're going to be realistic. On top of this, you now have Jahan Dotson. Jahan Dotson's the best wide receiver Terry McLaurin has played with throughout his entire NFL career. So we have still very bad quarterback play. We have the most target competition he's ever seen. He's never been a top 20 wide receiver, and he's going into his age 20 a year. I, I don't know. I think Terry McLaurin's a very high floor fantasy football option. Terry McLaurin's never going to bust in fantasy football, but I just don't know if he can ever turn into a league winner. Now, I know a lot of people are going to hate us for having DJ Moore down here, wide receiver 25 as well. And you hear the hype everywhere for DJ Moore. The same people that were telling you, oh yeah, Cortland Sutton's the next Cooper Cup. They're now all of a sudden saying DJ Moore is the next Cooper Cup. Now with DJ Moore, this is three straight seasons. He has been a wide receiver three in fantasy from a per game perspective. Wide receiver 27, wide receiver 25, wide receiver 33. Now we can blame this on quarterback play. And I want to be on record and I want to say the Chicago Bears are going to be the most improved passing offense in the entire NFL this next year. The Chicago Bears will most likely be the most improved team in the NFL this next season. I don't think they're going to earn the number one overall pick again. But if we are realistic with ourselves, the Chicago Bears this past year were the worst passing offense that we have seen in the past decade for the NFL. So what I'm expecting is I'm expecting two things to happen. I'm expecting one, Justin Fields to take massive steps forward as a passer with a much better situation now. And at the same time, I'm expecting the passing volume in Chicago to still be piss poor at the bottom of the league. They can get significantly better, right? There's so much room for improvement and they may get way better and go from being the worst passing offense in the NFL over the past 10 years to still being bad. So I just want to be realistic here with DJ Moore. I love Justin Fields in fantasy, but that's because his rushing upside. I don't expect a lot of passing volume to be there. Now, our next guy will be Christian Kirk. Kirk. This past season, wide receiver 19 from a points per game basis. The question is, right, can he compete with Calvin Ridley? Not only do you have Calvin Ridley, but you also have Zay Jones. Zay Jones is a capable wide receiver three there. You also have Evan Ingram, who is dominating targets down the stretch this past season. So you kind of do have a crowded wide receiver room slash tight end room in Jacksonville. I I don't necessarily know if Kirk has the same level ceiling that you're going to see with a player like Calvin Ridley. So it is what it is. Now, our next guy will be Brandon Ayuk. And Brandon Ayuk had a bounce back this past year, right? Two years ago, while Debo Samuel was the wide receiver three from a points per game perspective, Brandon Ayuk was the wide receiver 57. Now, Brandon Ayuk definitely got a lot better this past year. Instead of being a wide receiver five, he was a high end wide receiver three in fantasy, wide receiver 25. A lot of people love Brandon Ayuk because he looks like a typical wide receiver, right? You turn on the TV and that's what you're used to seeing. You're used to seeing wide receivers kind of run real routes, not get manufactured touches, operate downfield. And a lot of people think that makes Brandon Ayuk more valuable than Debo Samuel in fantasy. But what I would just say is Brandon Ayuk has a lower floor than we've ever seen from Debo Samuel. And we've never seen Brandon Ayuk post the same ceiling as Debo Samuel, where two years ago, Debo Samuel was the wide receiver three. Now, I understand everybody loves Ayuk. Everybody hates Debo. 
I feel like we're maybe being a little realistic here, ranking both of them as wide receiver twos slash high and wide receiver threes. I don't know. You all can hate on me. Now, our next guy will be Hollywood. This offense is supposed to be very bad. Now, with Hollywood Brown, the Arizona Cardinals have an expected win total of four and a half this next year. We have no idea how many games Kyler Murray will start. If Kyler Murray was fully healthy and you had no DeAndre Hopkins, I promise you I would have Hollywood Brown significantly higher than this. The overall concerns that you have are going to be similar to the same concerns that we have with Terry McLaurin, similar to the same concern that we have with DJ Moore. I just realistically don't know how many passing yards, passing touchdowns we can expect in this Arizona Cardinals offense. Now, our wide receiver 30 will be Chris Godwin. And with Godwin, very similar situation, right? I mean, right now, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, according to Las Vegas Sportsbooks, are supposed to be the second worst team in the NFL, only ahead of the Arizona Cardinals. The reason I'm going to go Hollywood over Godwin, despite the fact that Godwin's been a top 24 wide receiver for three straight seasons now, is at least in the case of Hollywood Brown, you can make the argument that while he's in a horrendous offense, he is the only guy to throw the ball to. That's not really the case in Tampa, right? I mean, you still have Mike Evans. You don't have like a Kyler Murray player that can come back at the end of the year. Instead, you're really just hoping that Baker Mayfield is somehow able to turn his career around. Now, I think Godwin is a phenomenal, phenomenal talent, right? It's just, at the end of the day, I'm not a big Baker Mayfield believer. But I think this is all we have for you in this set of rankings. But again, thank you so much for checking out this video. And if you have not done so already, you better be going down there, dropping a like. You better be subscribed to the channel. And of course, if you want to draft with us, we are drafting every single night on Underdog Fantasy. If you want to sign up on Underdog, you can always find that link in the description in the comment section. If you use promo code FLOCK, they're going to match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to 100 Plus, you'll get our 2023 Fantasy Football Rankings, a free trial to FlockFantasy.com, where you can find our 2023 Fantasy Football Draft Guide. And you can check out all those season-long player props. Like I said, my favorite is going to be Drake London, more receiving touchdowns than Michael Gallup. But I think that's all I have for you. Again, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Really do appreciate you and really hope I get a draft with you in a live stream tonight.